when is this guy going to start showing us some maps, I bet you've been thinking. Uh, and you've probably all been on the edge of your seat. And now's the time. We're going to open a vector map. Now, what's a vector map? Uh, I explained that in one of the posts that I uh, have sent you. But if you have forgotten that, what we're talking about is we're talking about points, lines, and polygons. We're talking about things like power poles and rubbish bins for points. We're talking about things like roads for lines. And we're talking about uh, things uh, about things like uh, property boundaries and football ovals and, and uh, tennis courts and so forth for polygons. Okay, these are three very, very simple constructs, but very, very powerful. We're going to do this uh, in a vector map. These are vector map constructs we're talking about. So what we do is we come here to this menu at the top here that basically says if, and it doesn't say anything, it's, o it's open map, add vector layer anyhow. My uh, screen capture software seems to prevent some of these things from coming up. Okay, we are going to browse for the data set when we come to, the, to here, and we're going to click on this um, file called cadaster.shp. Now, a .shp file um, invisible to you here uh, are two other files, uh, perhaps three even, as a component of this SHP file, which is known as a shape file. And uh, these shape files have a database component and they have a, a mapping component, they have a projection component often. Uh, and I'm not sure what the third, the, the last file's for. It's probably, in fact, it'll be just to join the shape, the uh, mapping component and the database component together. Now, we're talking about Esri shape files. These are a very, very simple constructive file, and we're going to be working with shape files throughout the rest of this uh, short course, short tutorial. They are, being Esri shape files, they're an industry standard. Anyhow, they're very, very simple. They don't hold information like uh, the line colors. They're, they're non-topological, uh, and uh, topological files are, are, are a bit more of a sophisticated sort of a format. They're, they're ones where the um, individual lines know what is either side of the line. They know that uh, Mr. Smith owns a property on one boundary, and Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Jones owns one on another boundary, and so forth. Shape files are a far more simple construct than that, but that's that's fine. It, it doesn't matter for the sort of work we're doing. We're we're just showing you uh, very simply how to um, work in a geographical information system. Now, just a reminder: we're looking in that directory or that folder that you extracted from that uh, file that you downloaded. So you should have Learn Practical GIS, QGIS for newbies. Now, I've left that on my desktop. You may have put that somewhere else on your computer, but you, you need to find it. Or if you can't find it, just uh, download the file again and re-extract it to somewhere where you know. OK, Esri shapefiles are one of many files that you could download. Map info files are a very common format. Um, that, that I'm familiar with. Uh, some of these I'm not really familiar with. Uh, MicroStation is something I've dealt with a fair bit. I come across the Atlas files occasionally. Uh, comma separated values are something that uh, are very, very important. Um, geographical markup language I think is becoming a bit more common. Uh, KML, this is what, um, which is keyhole markup language. This is what Google Maps uses. A lot, a lot of these are, um, are fairly new formats, and, and some of them are pretty old. All the ArcInfo formats are quite old. DXF's quite old, and so forth. So the point is, there's a whole bunch of vector formats that you're likely to find around the web, and QGIS is more than likely able to bring any format that you can throw at it um, into it. And, and if not, 
Uh, it's not going to be um, too difficult to find, hopefully, uh, too difficult to find a uh, converter that will bring it into one of these uh, one of these formats so you can bring it in. Anyway, we're looking at the cadaster. And cadaster is, of course, a French name for um, property boundaries. And off we go. Okay, so this has brought this in as a default color of pink uh, because there's no, once again, no coloration uh, recorded with the shape file. Uh, in other places, in, in other videos, you may have seen this as blue or, or you know, different colors. So anyway, we have now brought our first vector file into QGIS. It is turned up in the map window and we have, uh, and it's shown up in the um, layers window as well. And we're going to uh, look at the layers window and a whole bunch of other stuff associated with this uh, in future videos. In the next video, I want to talk about doing some uh, initial interpretation just on just by looking at this uh, at this map. Okay, till then.